Breath of the Wild is an amazing game, but we spent a long time waiting for it. Ever since it was revealed in 2014, I had been waiting with bated breath just to hear anything about this game. I've put over 300 hours into this game now, and I still am discovering new things every time I play. It's just such an amazing, vast world. But it seems, looking back, that this game has gone through a lot of changes in the many years it's spent in development. Looking at the map that was shown back in 2014, it seems to be relatively the same, with small differences here and there, but how much has the game really changed, and can we find all of these spots from back then? I actually decided to go back and take a look at all of the old trailers, and find where those locations ended up being in the final game. Let's start with the more recent and work our way backwards. I did a pretty heavy analysis way back when on the story trailer and the Life in the Ruins trailer, but I never did an analysis on the E3 trailer from 2016. And I'm pretty well versed in the world of Breath of the Wild now, and I was able to actually find all of the locations in the trailer. Starting from this panning shot, which actually turned out to be in the Nakluda region, we can pretty much shot for shot remake the trailer. But this is a really recent build of the game, so finding all of these areas wasn't too challenging. But what if we take a step even farther back? Do you remember in 2014 when we got this gameplay demo at the Game Awards? Okay, so today, why don't we show a glimpse of how the new Zelda game is shaping up? Sure. The, I remember this little gameplay segment really capturing my imagination, but where is this now in the final game? Thanks to the map that they actually show, it was pretty easy to find this spot being just outside Hateno Village. You can see that the area remains pretty much the same, but also really different, with some subtle changes to the elevations of the mountains, and actually the cliff that Link is standing on himself being scaled back and shortened, the region's tower having moved as well. But other than that, a lot of the area's geography has remained relatively unchanged. So if we follow Mr. Anuma off of this cliff when he uses the sailcloth, which became the paraglider. It cuts here and I was always unsure of just how far away he went, but it turns out that it's really close by actually. In fact, here's how far I had to go to find this spot. The cliffs have been, again, altered just a little bit, but I was able to find the spot thanks to that rock formation off the edge of the cliff. But here's the confusing part next. They say that they're riding to where the tower is, but then suddenly they cut to all the way down to Lake Colomo, between Central Hyrule and the Great Plateau. They would have had to ride out pretty far to get to that spot if the map has really remained this intact. So they really haven't stuck close to their destination at all. In fact, they went way past it and way far away. They ended up over here by these two pillars, which we now know are the Faron Woods region. And again, this is still pretty far off from their target and where they started. They had to have been riding for a while. Although the enemies aren't here anymore in the final game, Miyamoto was right that we are close to a, well, what he called a dungeon, but turned out to be a shrine near this place. But it's weird because they were riding in from the north, and then they ride back out towards the north again, which means that they must have already crossed the Bridge of Hylia to get to this point, only to turn around and cross again. So I've marked with pins on the map about the route that they took, and again, it's kind of very confusing that they went so far from what they said was their destination, but... Oh well, it was just a gameplay demonstration, not something to think too heavily into. But what if we go even farther back? We had such silence about this game for so long, it can't be any surprise that what little information we had became so well known and so iconic. So do these areas still exist? I mean, this was the first time that they revealed the game, but this was only a few months prior to the Game Awards footage, right? So do the areas from this very first original trailer still exist in the game? I mean, everything else seems to be pretty well intact from 2014, right? Well, if we take a poke around, sort of. Some of them do. Why don't we start over here where Link rounds this corner? These statues still do exist in the game, although not exactly in this formation. It's really hard to find, but the closest I can get is this area near the Zonai ruins here. But it gets a little confusing from there. This does not connect to any open fields, so they must have been having this pursuit for a long time to have gotten here. I'm not really sure, but the only corner I can find with this giant snake statue like this 
does not have this bird statue in any close proximity to it. Although, rounding it does take you right to this little bridge area here, but on the other side. So either that they flipped a bridge or something, or they recorded just a bunch of different footage. Either way, it doesn't make any geographical sense with the final game. Again, it's possible that the game has just changed so much since then that this used to be how the map was, but it isn't anymore. But again, only a few months later we got that Game Awards map, which is almost identical to the final release. So it's just very confusing in retrospect. But I know the question that everyone came here for. This screenshot of Hyrule, where is this in the game? I mean, we do have some landmarks that are in the final game. Well, we just have to try and triangulate where this area is. I did a lot of digging and I realized that the villagers and buildings are probably gone, but maybe, just maybe this area does exist in some form in the game. So what landmarks do we have to go on? Well. The dueling peaks are far in the back, and you also get to see Hyrule Castle and Death Mountain, and another sort of spirally looking mountain, which I've actually figured out to be the Peak of Awakening. If we pin all of these areas and triangulate them, that does bring us to the Nakluda region. But where? Well, I did a lot of digging around, and I think that this area has been dismantled and reintegrated separately into the map. Here we have what looks like the Cliffs of Quince, and we have some Bokoblin Tower, or Bokoblin and camp, camp Tower thing, but none of these close to an open field like this. And there's a few other problems that I've run into. For example, the Dueling Peaks seem to have flipped, with the smaller side being on the south instead of the north. And not to mention that Death Mountain seems to have grown substantially. But I wasn't able to find any open fields that would give us this angle of all of these landmarks. Just, it just doesn't line up. We did see in the Game Wars trailer that the elevation of some mountains has changed. So my theory is that this area has just become a different area, that they've built mountains on top of it. They probably flipped the Dueling Peaks for some reason at some point in development to better line up with the geography of this world. But it's just impossible to find an area exactly like this. The best bet is that it lines up somewhere around here, and that at one point this area was more open field and became a mountain that they just started building mountain on top of it, but that's really the best we can get. In all honesty, I believe that our best bet is either Mount Dunsel or Mount Turan. It's really sad though, because for a long time, this was all we had of Breath of the Wild. All right guys, maybe I'm thinking too hard and digging too deep into this, but let me know what you think down below in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to Nintendo Prime, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.